One of the key components of technical SEO are redirects. In this video, let's take a deep look at redirects and really understand how we can use redirects and how we implement redirects. Let's begin by defining what a redirect is. A redirect is a directive that you give your web server, and that directive tells your web server to reroute any request to one URL over to a different URL. Redirects can be useful to fix 404 errors or to help avoid errors when you're changing URLs. For example, you can tell your web server via a redirect directive to reroute anybody who attempts to access a broken link and instead have them redirected over to a working page on your website. In the same way, if you change a URL, maybe you reword a URL on a blog post, you can tell your web server to reroute anybody who attempts to access that old URL and redirect them over to the new URL. Now that we've introduced what redirects are, there's a lot more to cover in this video, including what pages you should redirect to, how you implement a redirect, how you test redirects, and some other random questions that come up about redirects. Feel free to jump around in this video to the questions that are most relevant to you. There are a lot of nuances and details within redirects, and one of those really tricky questions is what page you should redirect to. Redirecting updated pages is pretty easy. For example, a page about an old product might have been removed from the website. But there's a new version of that product, so you can redirect people who attempt to access the old product URL over to the new product URL. Easy enough to decide where to put that redirect and where to reroute people to. However, this becomes a little bit harder if we're talking about removed pages. For removed pages, the redirect should take visitors to a page that meets similar expectations as the removed page. Let's say that you take down that old product on your e-commerce site, but you don't have a new product to redirect to. Maybe there's a similar product that you can redirect people over to that is from the same brand or same style of product. Fine, you can redirect people over there. Maybe you don't have a similar product, but you could redirect people over to a category page. If you can't redirect people from the old product over to a category page or to a related product, then in that case it might actually be better to let that old product return a 404. And the reason for that is that it's important to avoid redirecting visitors to a page that isn't something people don't expect to find. That can become really confusing and frustrating. If all of a sudden I was expecting to find some old product that you no longer carry, but now I'm looking at a whole different product that's a very different style, a very different uh, type of product, maybe you redirected me to a category that's not even really related or doesn't contain other products I'd be interested in. It's not a very good user experience. The home page usually isn't a relevant page to redirect to. The home page is very generic, very broad, speaks to so many different things about your business, about your website, about all the information contained on that website, and it's not really going to serve the same intention or purpose as any other page on your website. Think about it this way. If I'm a customer coming to your website and I'm expecting to see an old product that you no longer carry, would I be better served by seeing a message that told me you no longer carry that product? Or would I be better served by going to a really generic page on your website, like the home page? Chances are I'm going to be better served by seeing a message that says we no longer carry that product. In short, you want to find the most relevant page that you can redirect to. And sometimes you're not going to find a relevant page to redirect to, in which case you should let that URL 404, because the 404 is the most accurate signal you can send about that removed page. All right, here's a pro tip and something you should keep in mind as you work on implementing redirects on your website. One of the most common reasons that you'll need to implement redirects is during a replatforming or redevelopment of your website when a whole bunch of URLs are changing. If you're in that situation where a whole bunch of URLs are changing, you're going to want to implement redirects to send people from the old URL over to the new URL. Now that's great, and if you have a smaller website, that's a relatively easy undertaking. You can go through the few pages on your website, and you can figure out where those pages redirect. If you're dealing with a few hundred pages, even a few thousand pages, it's usually a pretty feasible, if somewhat tedious, project. But if you're moving over a lot of pages, we're talking about tens of thousands of pages, millions of pages, you're not going to be able to update each single URL individually and implement a redirect for that. 
Now you might be able to get away with doing some pattern based redirects, sometimes called regex or regular expression redirects that look for a particular pattern and tell your web server to redirect anything that matches that pattern over to a different URL. However, if you can't implement patterns or if that's something that's not feasible within your structure because you don't have certain patterns that can be followed, you might need to start picking and choosing which URLs to redirect. And in that case, you want to pick the URLs that are the most important, have the most traffic, have the best conversions, have the most backlinks. Those kinds of criteria help you know which URLs you should redirect and which ones you're okay not redirecting if you can't redirect everything. Now let's talk about how you implement a redirect on your website. When it comes to implementing a redirect, you have two very broad choices. You can either implement a redirect client side or server side. When you implement a redirect client side, you're letting the redirect happen in the browser. For example, there's a piece of JavaScript code that's in your browser that sends people to a different URL. The other choice is you have a server side redirect. And with a server side redirect, you're letting the server send people to a different page before it even loads into the browser. We want to do server side redirects unless you absolutely cannot do a server side redirect for whatever reason. Most often, server side redirects are configured via the HT access file on Apache, via IIS on Windows, or via a web.config file also on Windows. There are other ways that you can implement redirects and other places you can go on a server to implement redirects, but I just want to focus on these more common ones first. The first and biggest thing to note is that when we're implementing a redirect, we want to use a 301 response status code to indicate that the redirect is permanent. You've changed a URL, you're not going to change it back. It's permanent. You're fixing a broken link, you're not going to let that break again. It's a permanent change. The alternative to a 301 is a 302 response code. This is often the default setting, which makes it easier to implement, but 302s are usually not the correct choice to implement. 302s indicate that the redirect is temporary. You're only temporarily fixing that broken link. You're only temporarily changing that URL. Now, as a side note, I should mention there is some anecdotal evidence that Google treats 302 redirects as 301 redirects in some cases, meaning they view the 302 not as temporary, but as permanent. However, this is only anecdotal. So as best as possible, make sure you're doing it correctly and communicating the right way with different bots and browsers who are accessing your website by using a 301 to indicate that the redirect is permanent, assuming the redirect is permanent, which it probably will be in almost all cases. Let's talk about how we actually write the code to implement this redirect. Starting with Apache in the HT access file, here are the steps that you need to follow to add a redirect to the HT access file. You can access your HT access file in the root directory of your website. It'll be labeled as .ht access, and you should be able to see it. If you can't see it within your listing, make sure that you're able to view hidden files or dot .files, depending on your server setup. This is a plain text file, so you're going to want to open it in Notepad. Once you have it open, you can add a redirect to the HT access file by first creating a redirect statement in the HT access file on a new line. After you have the redirect statement added, you then want to define the type of redirect that it is, 301 or 302. Again, 301 is permanent, 302 is temporary. More often than not, we're going to want to define these as 301 to indicate permanence. Next, you want to state the broken or changed URL we want to redirect somewhere else. What is the source that you're redirecting from? Finally, you want to state what URL you are redirecting to, the target of the redirect or the destination of the redirect. So we put all that together and here's our redirect statement. We have redirect, which is the declaration that this is a redirect statement, 301, that's the type of redirect, slash login, that's what we're redirecting from, and then we have http colon slash slash www.examplesite.com slash login.html. That's what we're redirecting to. You then save your HT access file and re-upload it to your website's root directory, and this redirect will now exist on your website. We can do something similar on a Windows file with a web.config redirect. On a web.config file, the redirect statement goes in between configuration tags. 
To create the statement, you'll start by defining the path of the broken or changed URL that you want to redirect from. Then we want to define our destination, where we're redirecting to. In the HTTP redirect tag, we also want to add an attribute of HTTP response status, and we want to set that to permanent instead of temporary. This is how you define 301 versus 302 in a web config file. Finally, you want to state what URL you're redirecting to. So we put all that together and we have this statement located within our configuration tags. In this case, we're redirecting from calendar slash 634.html to http colon slash slash www.examplesite.com slash calendar.html and we have noted that this is a permanent redirect. Now that we've talked through the code methods of implementing redirects, let's talk through a slightly easier way of implementing redirects with a redirect plugin in WordPress. This plugin is called Redirection. On the main WordPress redirection screen, you can edit existing redirects or you can add a new redirect. When you're on the Add New screen, the source URL is the URL you are redirecting from. That's the old URL or the broken URL that you're trying to tell your server to send people elsewhere instead of being at that URL. And then you specify the target URL. The target URL is what you're redirecting to. This plugin also allows you to handle redirects with regular expressions, which regular expressions were those ways that you can implement redirects with a pattern. So that way you can say everything in this directory should redirect over to this other directory instead. Redirection also lets you group redirects, which is really helpful to stay organized. You can group all of your product-related redirects separately from your blog-related redirects. Now that we've implemented our redirects, we want to know how we test our redirects. Let's begin by talking about how we can test this redirect in Google Search Console. Google Search Console is available at google.com webmasters. In Google Search Console, you want to check that a URL redirects by using the URL inspection tool. That's located at the top of the screen. And at the top of the screen, you want to put in the URL that you're redirecting from. Once it runs its inspection, if the redirect is implemented properly, it should come back and say page with redirect. Assuming you see page with redirect, Google recognizes that this redirect exists on your website. That's an important piece to testing out these redirects is making sure that Google can actually see them, especially since part of why we're implementing redirects is to help our SEO. But we may want to do more than simply test that Google can see that a redirect exists. We want to know that we are returning the right response status code, 301 or 302. We want to know that we're redirecting to the right destination. We can do that in a few different ways. One of the tools I like the best for doing this is a tool called WhereGoes. It's available at WhereGoes.com. Once you're on WhereGoes.com, you can put in the URL that you're redirecting from, then click Trace URL. It will come back with the redirect trace. And in this case, we can see that we're redirecting from MatthewEdgar.net slash TechSEO slash Controlling Search Robots with a 301 redirect over to matthewedgar.net slash noindex versus nofollow versus disallow. If you're getting the results that you expected, both in terms of the destination and the 301 response code, you're good to go, and this redirect is implemented successfully. Finally, let's talk through some frequently asked questions about redirects. Would I ever want to use a 302 redirect? Yeah, you may want to use a 302 redirect in certain cases if the redirect is actually temporary. Let's say that you're temporarily shutting down a promotion on your website, but you know you're going to start this promotion up again in a day or two. In that case, you may want to temporarily redirect that old promotion URL over to a main promotion page on your website, in which case you're temporarily shutting it down, you're temporarily preventing people from seeing that page, but you're only temporarily shutting it down because you're going to remove that redirect in a day or two. The concern with using 302 redirects is that the temporary nature quickly becomes an actually permanent nature of it. So you thought you were temporarily shutting down that promotion for a couple of days, but a couple of days go by and, oh no, we can't turn on that promotion again. Then it's a week, then it's a month, then it's a quarter, then it's a year, and you still have that 302 in place. So if you implement a 302 redirect, make sure that it's actually temporary. What are 307 or 308 redirects? 307 or 308 redirects are part of HTTP 
These are new response codes that we can use to describe our redirects. For the most part, these aren't fully supported by Google yet, so I still recommend you use 301 or 302 instead. But when we get to it, 307 is the new version of a temporary redirect. It's the equivalent of a 302. 308 is the new version of a permanent redirect, or the equivalent of a 301. What are redirect chains? A redirect chain is where you have multiple redirects all strung together. So instead of page A redirecting to page B, and page B returning actual content, in the case of a redirect chain, you have page A redirecting over to page B, page B redirects to page C, page C redirects over to page D, and maybe page D actually returns content. So in order to reach page D, in order to reach that endpoint destination from page A, you had to go through multiple hops or multiple steps of that redirect chain. The one thing to note on redirect chains is that bots and browsers will only follow so many steps in a chain. Google, for their part, recommends that you should keep chains less than five. Browsers will typically follow up to about 20 redirect hops, but I wouldn't push it that far. Every step in that redirect chain adds to your website speed. That means that for every step in that redirect chain, you're slowing things down, at least by a little bit. That creates a bad user experience, not to mention it can lead to bots not following things, not finding that actual endpoint destination, or browsers not following that redirect chain and sending users to that endpoint destination. As much as possible, you want to keep your redirects to one, maybe two steps at most. What are redirect loops? A redirect loop is a redirect chain that never reaches an endpoint destination. It just keeps redirecting to other redirects. For example, page A redirects over to page B, page B redirects over to page C, and page C redirects back over to page A. How will redirects impact traffic? Redirects do have some impact on traffic. From an SEO standpoint, almost always when you change a URL, even if you've redirected that old URL that you've changed over to a new destination, you're going to see a slight dip in the amount of traffic that you're receiving from organic search. You might even see that your positions reduce for a period of time after you've implemented that redirect. It's as if Google's bots have to go in and evaluate that new page that you're redirecting to and decide if that new page you're redirecting to is worthy of the rankings that that old page was getting. Sometimes this can be a very sizable drop in traffic. I've seen even up to 100% of traffic loss, though that's rare. More often than not, you're talking about 5, 10, maybe 20% drop in traffic. But because of that, you do want to be very careful with implementing redirects and making sure that you're only implementing redirects when absolutely necessary, that you're changing URLs when absolutely necessary, especially for really high-performing pages or high-ranking pages. How long should I keep redirects? Honestly, there's no universal answer to this question. In some cases, you're going to want to keep redirects for quite a long period of time. In other cases, not that long at all. That's because how long you should keep redirects depends on whether or not those redirects are being used or not. You want to know if people are continuing to visit your website via that redirect. You want to know if people are linking back to your website via that redirect. You want to know if any of those redirects are ranking in search results. As long as you're continuing to get traffic from those redirects, as long as you're continuing to see people link to your website via those redirects, as long as you're continuing to see those redirected URLs rank in search results, you're going to want to keep that redirect in place because that redirect is sending traffic to your website. It's adding value to your website and therefore worth keeping. If you have any other questions about redirects or if you want clarification on anything that I've talked about in this video, please let me know. You can shoot me an email at matthew at elementive.com or you can visit my website at matthewedgar.net for more information. If you found this video educational and enjoyed watching it, please consider subscribing to Elementive's channel for more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching.